What's actually... your varietal guess? Oh, it's Chardonnay. Fucking Chardonnay. Yeah, I thought it was Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Got another week of Blind Wines. Bit of a special edition this time around. So usually we send off a blank check to a random bottle shop, sometimes always, who always hook us up with some really interesting and nuanced wines. This week we're actually taking the I've got no money, I'm a uni student and I need to take a bottle of wine to someone's house route. So all of these wines can be found at the standard Australian bottle shop for under $10. I'll be interested to see what goes on here. Hopefully there's one or two of them that aren't awful. If you want to watch more content like this, let us know down below because I had to work really hard to get these guys to drink some stuff that isn't good or not good. So we'll see how we go. Okay, let's try some of these fucking bargain bin best buys. I don't know what these are. Maybe they're terrible, maybe they're shit. Who bloody knows? Very light, delicate, coloured uh, red wine. I haven't drunk cheap wine in a long time because I've been hanging out with these guys, so I'll be very interested to see what this is like and if I've ruined it for myself. Really perfumed and red fruited. It is quite nail polishy. It's not that bad. <laughs> like, it's all right. Not a hell of a lot of tannin, but that's kind of welcome. Like this is a really easy drinking, easy going red wine. Um, I'm a fan. I'm actually a fan of that. I think it's great. It's like nice chewy tannin, good acid, not crazy too much on the palate. It's like red apples and red, red cherries, red currants kind of thing. If you were to drink really expensive vodka, right? And that would go down really smoothly and really nicely. And then all of a sudden you go to like that 30 to like $28 sort of like really rough, just this is the bottom of the barrel vodka. It's probably gonna taste a lot worse than this does compared to some more expensive wines. I don't hate it. All right, number two. Uh, lovely golden hued little number. Smells like shit. Uh, what? <laughs> that smells terrible. We haven't done many sparkling ones on the show. We've done some pet naps, but we haven't done any sort of like cork popping ones. So Lockie learned how to take a cage off before, which is fun. <laughs> it's passion pop. It literally smells like passion fruit. It, it's, it reminds me of the seltzer tasting. It reminds me now of um, fake passion fruit flavor. And I'm guessing I already know what this is. There's nothing, there's nothing complex about this on the nose. It just smells like passion fruit and sweet passion fruit. I reckon it's passion pop. I reckon this is probably passion pop, which is something that I did drink quite a bit of when I was young. Now, back in the day when I was buying that, that was going for about six bucks a bottle. So that's where I reckon it's probably sitting at. It is a bit of a cheat knowing that it's all under $10. So if you get it way off, you're doing something wrong. But yeah, don't hate it. But at the same time, those guys will, they're gonna hate all of these, I think. Um, I'd say like, 10 bucks, Aussie, max. I'd buy a bottle uh, to give to people that I hate. Number three, a bit deeper, more like plums and chocolate and stuff like that. Another lovely sort of cherry red, light colored wine. It almost already looks a little bit like Pinot-esque uh, in a way. Uh, it looks a little bit darker than the first one. Um, let's see. It's very watery. It feels really, really thin and watery. There's like a greenness on the palate, bright red berries, that kind of thing, but feels just watered down and diluted. I'm not a massive fan of this, to be honest. It's not, it's not all cherry flavor. There's a little bit of savory, uh, savory qualities there, which is actually really quite, quite pleasant. I reckon the other one was a lighter style of red. This one might be a heavier style of red. So this is probably somewhere in the, um, like, uh, uh, it's a cheap Cabernet or a cheap Shiraz or a cheap Merlot, something along those lines. Realistically, I'd probably drop around about 18 bucks a bottle and I'd probably only buy a bottle of this. More bubbly. Jeez. <laughs> smells like a bunch of flowers. It smells the goods. It smells like a uh, really good entry level Riesling. It, it doesn't smell anything like what it tastes like. It smells like it's gonna be soup. It, it smelled like it was gonna be really sweet like the last one, but don't hate it. Don't mind it at all, to be honest. Um, you know, white florals, frangipanis, that kind of thing. That's cool. That's interesting. Little hints of lime zest. Very fun. It's like sparkling Sauvignon Blanc, really. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's gross. It's, uh, it's got like an oyster shell thing, but while well, that's been dipped in a jug of sugar and covered in acid. Yeah, it's probably my second favorite so far. Um, not gonna lie, I'm being somewhat impressed by these ones. <laughs> Got some rosé. Okay, this smells really uh, perfumey, like a uh, artificial scent. 
artificial sound, is how I'd say it. Peachy, red lipstick kind of thing. It smells all right. It smells a bit like white nectarine and musk sticks. A little bit of what we call a disjointed palate. There is this bulbousness. It's not a sweet wine, but I know I can sense again that the thickness of that residual sugar. This is the one that I've ruined cheap rosé for me because that's what rosé used to taste like and I used to drink a bit of it and I didn't mind it, but now I've drunk really nice rosés on this show and it's hard to go back to that. If I was an, at an RSL, I'd feel pretty appropriate drinking this. I, don't, I actually don't hate this. There is like kind of that strawberry thing, there's a bit of guava. Again, nothing to write home about, but I think it's not too bad. The other two have been sparkling, this one's Still, no idea what this is. A bit of like, like Nutella, kind of hazelnutiness, a bit creamy. It smells like a candy, like a lemon candy or something like that. Very muted nose, very quiet. It's not really, nothing really coming out of the glass of note. It was, it was actually okay until all of this kind of really fake oak chippy flavor just came roaring through. It's got this really sickly caramel finish that I really hate. It's doing nothing. Like that tastes a lot like water. Um, but it, it doesn't even have like spice or anything in your mouth, but as it's going down, it's like, oh no, that's not water. That's sort of stinging a little bit. Um, I think you don't like in a wine style like this. I think it's just too far. It feels, it feels American. No, this is gross. I don't like this at all. I'm not a fan of, of this wine at all. Um, and I certainly won't be spending a lot of money on it, uh, 10 bucks. And I know that this wine probably even costs a little bit more to produce, but again, uh, I'll, I'll grab a bottle so I can use it as a showcase piece of probably what not to do. Um, but uh, yeah, not not overly a fan of that. Um, if I had a spare 10 bucks, I'd, I'd sooner launch it at a pint of beer uh, than I probably would a bottle of this wine. Cool. Well, this has been one of the more unique lineups we've had. I had a lot of fun. I, I, I mean, full disclosure, didn't enjoy a lot of them, didn't buy a lot. This is definitely the cheapest bracket for me, personally, in terms of financial commitment. But I really, really enjoyed the process. So we we'll start out with wine number one. Um, what do you guys think? I actually liked this one. This was, I, I will buy a dozen. Uh, a dozen! I will buy a dozen of this wine and I will pay $25 a bottle for it. Look, what do we got? $10? $10. Ten bucks. That's $10? 120 buck dozen. I'll probably get it. Dude. What do we got? It's Pinot. Pino. It's Pino. It's Creek Pino. Oh, wicked. Hey, look. There you go. <laughs> New look coming soon. Oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. 2020 uh, Adelaide. No, it's not Adelaide. Where, where's Jacobs Creek getting their grapes from? Everywhere. This would be Rosa awesome Valley. That's uh, where, that's that's where, where they no, Honestly, this would probably be a, um, what does it actually say? Does not just say, no, it just says Australia. So grapes from everywhere. So it's not even like Southeastern Australia. It's no. not like, like it is just they got some good Australia. Stuff. They got some WA for it in there. How good? There's just, it's a mixture of all the Pinots. But for $10, that's actually hilariously tasty. Speaking of hilariously tasty, what do we think of one number two? It's passion pop. Uh, it's passion pop, isn't uh, it? Is it passion pop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 720. Bargain. There Yay! it is. Just to clarify that that bottle there is pretty much the same price as one can of 250 mil seltzer. Of those seltzers that we had. It kind of tastes like one as well, to be honest. It well, tastes more like a more sugar. flavory, like a more flavor intense version of one of the seltzers. It does. That's hilarious. It's very amusing that on the back of this, it says enjoy passion pop responsibly. Has anyone ever enjoyed passion pop responsibly? I would be concerned if they did. I would be like, concerned yeah. if you went over to like a really nice dinner. Oh, I'm just going to crack like a little bottle of bubbly here. And you're like, they pour it out. For oh, you. I really enjoy this. Have you I fucking just served me passion <laughs> pop? <laughs> Seriously? I've really enjoyed this glass sparkling wine. Would you like another? <laughs> Absolutely, Debra. I think that would be lovely. Wine number three. What was it? I mean, I mean, if you're paying four dollars, you wouldn't be too mad. Riverside Landing. That's Captain Merlin. Riverside. Hey. The Riverside front. Landing. Uh, it's got a steamboat oh, on it. Oh, it's fresh vintage. Oh, it's a 2021. Yeah. Juicy Cabernet Merlot made purely for the senses. Its delightful berry flavours linger on the palate, making no, this wine perfect no. match for any barbecue or char-grilled meat. I don't hate it. It's not the worst. No, it's, it's better than the $7.20 sparkling. It's better than Passion it's Pop. Be it's better than Passion Pop. That That's, is this is what we're looking for here. It's better, than passion pop. <laughs> it's better than Passion Pop but almost half the price. <laughs> wine number four. Moscato. Because what is it? Are we going to figure out what it is? Five bucks. Five bucks. I mean, it's good branding for five bucks, to be honest. What have we got? 
We have Chancellor, Chancellor and Coke, Coke Brute Kubi, non vintage. Yeah, so it's just like a, a baseline sparkling. Um, and it's also like the fact that a sparkling wine is flat within half an hour does not do well for sparkling wine in general. It doesn't bode particularly well for it. But I honestly don't hate the bread. That no, that's not bad. It's actually not bad. That's all right. You know what? It kind of looks a little bit like Shandon in the front. Got it. it yeah. It's got like a. Oh, yeah, that is. It, they're trying to take some. They're taking some cues elsewhere, yeah. for sure. One number five. Rose territory, obviously. I liked it. What do we got? Seven bucks. Mm. Not too bad. Man, on this, that's, a on, on that's a big fucking bottle. That's a liter. That's a liter. That's a liter. <laughs> oh, okay, well, now we need to. Uh, How much was that again? Seven, seven bucks. Seven, seven bucks a liter. Give me a liter of wine. <laughs> so. <laughs> What, that's 25% more than your standard bottle of wine, so... 33% more wine, it says! 33% <laughs> more wine. How does that work? Well, well it's in... What? Yeah, it's, no, you yeah, know, that's right, yeah. It's 33% more it's than an extra 50 ml bottle. Yeah, oh it's man, that's so, so tricky. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Um, uh, remarkable value. But at, at this sort of this this point here, I sort of go, why didn't they just put in a cask? Uh, the last worst, wine. most disgusting wine I've had in probably a S long time. Smelled like nothing. Yep. I couldn't smell a single damn thing on this. It's just like, what's your uh, what's your right, what's your right or guess? Oh, it's Chard Fucking Chardonnay. Yeah, I thought it was Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Eight bucks. Yellowtail! <laughs> right in Australia! There it is, no way. Oh my god. No Yellowtail Chardonnay. That's also just Australia, not Southeast Australia, so we've got some good Margaret River quality Chardonnay in here. Surely yeah, the good news is. is we're wrong because this is the world's most loved wine brand. Well, you yeah. can't measure love, can you? That's, yeah, 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 that's yeah, what my yeah. mum tells me at least. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think, yeah, as you, as you progress towards the bottom of that bottle, you may pick up some peach. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you give it a shake before yeah. you drink. <laughs> Look, they were all under ten bucks. That, that was, there were some actually pretty impressive. That first red was that, pretty impressive for, for a town. That Pinot is hilariously good. Um, I actually I didn't hate the rosé, and for four dollars for the Cab Merlot, you're not mad. No, you know that's that's your like outside of of goon or box wine. That's probably what you're looking at for your uh, absolute sangria. Absolute stuff. value, yeah. What yeah. I'm hearing is we're going to do a good and box wine taste. I think we have to compare yeah. the cheapest wines that are in glass bottles versus the real bottom of the barrel stuff. Thanks for tuning in. This has been very cheap blind wine tastings, and we'll see you next time, guys. Ciao. Cheers. Bye.